Payne, W6YOU, and uh, I teach J Standard 001 Echo for uh, a Fortune 500 company, and I have customers from all over the U.S. government teaching them to solder. Most of the time they're, quote, te technicians. I do get a few engineers in class, and I get quite a few engineers today who, after four years of school, have never soldered once. So it's quite interesting. So I start from the bottom. So guys, let's talk a little bit about, we've all soldered in here, we all have to, we're ham operators. Talk about a little safety. Get yourself some good eye protection. I've seen damage, what a solder blip can do to the eye, and uh, very painful, let alone what it can do to your hands. We're not plumbers. We're not plumbers. <coughs> Use good solder, and we're gonna talk about the right solder in just a minute. The solder that we use, for the most part, is 6337. We still use lead in this country. We are the only country now using lead, and uh, it melts at 361, which means your iron, my irons are calibrated at 750, 750 Fahrenheit. So you usually solder it double. Butane, the ones I demonstrated before, we'll talk about these. These are good for about 1,100 degrees. Why would you ever want that much heat, you say? How about outside in uh, the desert? I've soldered in the desert, the bush, I've soldered in the jungle, I've soldered in Helsinki in the middle of winter outside, and what you do, you just jack up the heat. Give you a little more, a little more uh, heat when you have just a little wind blowing, guys. Just a little breeze, even today, even a little breeze will take heat away from your connection. Try not to inhale the fumes, because the fumes not only have burned flux in them, but there is a certain amount of lead in the fumes. Always wash your hands prior to touching food. You got lead on you. And always the proper tip for the proper job. My Edson here, I have approximately 15 tips for this, and my brand new Haco, I have five tips for it. Okay, on irons, yes, we have electric, chemical, battery, butane. We have the famous cold heat that was advertised on the History Channel. Don't go buy one of those, okay, guys? What they're doing is sending six volts through a pair of carbon tongs, which gets the connection red hot due to high current flow. Not too good on solid state devices. <laughs> okay, here's my two irons up here. This is an Edson. This is a Heiko, these are brand new. Well, this one's brand new, this is 20 years old. Still working like a brand new one. Temperature controlled, yes. I have all these calibrated to 750. This one, all I have to do is power it off, put the exact temperature I need. Is this adequate heat? Well, putting wires together, yes. For soldering terminals, yes. But I'll tell you what, guys, you're not gonna do a PL259 with these. No way. You're gonna need some beef. That's what you're gonna need. And I think I demoed to everybody last year, or a couple of years ago, on how to put out a PL259. And uh, all things considered, crimp. Crimp when you can. Okay. Your solder gun that you had when you were kids, I see a lot of people with gray hair. Do we all have solder guns? The Wellers. Remember those, the Wellers? You've got them, Frank. I still got mine. My dad bought me mine in 1957. I built 35 Heath kits with that thing in high school. I still got it. You don't want to use those today unless you're putting on a coax connector. The Weller heat gun is basically what? It's a step-down transformer. You got 110 on the primary, you got five volts in the secondary at 10 amps. You don't want that going through an integrated circuit. Keep it over here, keep it for putting on connectors. And demagnetizing screwdrivers. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I forgot about that one, yeah. Notice both these have calibrated temperatures. 
you think I've ever left this on over the weekend in the office? Nah, not me. I'll come back the next week, it's fine on Monday morning. And it stayed at 750 degrees all weekend. What's recovery time mean? Okay, this sponge is going to be damp. Do not wet your sponges, guys. Damp, just dampen your sponge. And the recovery time means that when you take the iron out, rub it three times, one, two, three. By the time that you have done the three rubs, you've lost 50 degrees. But by the time you get down to your circuit, it is already recovered back up to 750 degrees. Okay. Always fully insert these. Does anybody have an Edson? I know you yeah. do. Anybody have an Edson? Nobody? What are you guys using? <laughs> Don't tell me you're using this crap. <laughs> this is a $15 Radio Shack. Come on, we're hams. We spent $3,000, $5,000, $10,000 on our radios. Don't buy a $15 iron. Come on now. Guys, this is only $150. Bucks. This is $150. You should get some good stuff. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. When you're changing tips, this is all we have to do. Okay? Always make sure it's torqued all the way down because you want complete heat transfer from the iron to the tip. Now, everybody see this thing? This thing comes extra, costs five bucks extra for Edson. <coughs> you got a real hot tip, you turn your iron off, and you got to change into another tip. Guess what? It's made of silicon. You just undo and you won't burn your fingers. Okay? That's what that's for. Make sure you buy one of those with it. Okay. Always as soon as the iron heats up, put some solder on the tip, okay? Put some solder on the tip, give it a nice heat sink. I've got tips that are over 10 years old. You treat them right, you brush them with a nice wire brush when you're done at night, they'll last for years and years. So this tinning means, not that it's covered with tin, means it's covered with a layer of solder, okay? How about this? We know the Egyptians used solder way back. 350 BC was the Romans. The Romans used it to put together their lead pipes. And guys, I'm just going to talk about three kinds of solder tonight. Google solder and go to Wikipedia. It's like this many kinds. Unbelievable how many there are. All right. We're in the United States. We're still using tin lead. We are the only country. The EU started it. In Japan, Korea, China, everybody is using lead free. We'll and talk California, about lead free. No doubt. Of course. <laughs> uh, my state. <laughs> Guys, this is my mainstay of solder is the eutectic that I buy from uh, our friends at uh, Kester. Kester is still the number one solder brand as far as I'm concerned. It is 63% tin, which the Latin word is stanum, and 37% lead, which the Latin name is plumbum. Okay? Melts at 361. When I was a kid, when you guys were kids, we used 6040. Remember that? Then they found out that 6337 was eutectic. Does anybody know what that means? Yep. It means there's never plastic. It's either solid or liquid. There's nothing in between. So that's why you want to not look for 6040. You want to look for 6337. Okay. And then we got into this mess. Your iPhone, lead free. Your iPad is lead free. Your Sanyo TV is lead free. Your computer is lead free. Everything you've got at home is lead free. It will not be working in 10 years because of this thing called dendrites, the little whiskers that come out of the connections. I am very proud of the United States for standing up to the rest of the world and saying, we're going to go with solder made with lead. And it's the medical industry and the military here in the United States that has gone that way. So. SAC 305 
is the most common lead free right here look at this guys 96.5 percent tin three percent silver which that's why it's expensive and 0.5 percent copper which raises the melting temperature melts at 425 degrees instead of 361 so your iron has to be cranked up another 100 degrees when you use lead free Here's all the disadvantages, tin whiskering, high melting temperature, popcorning. Has anybody popcorned in here? Get the solders to damn hot it melt, it, uh, it spits, it uh, boils, and spits all over the board. High surface temperature, very poor wetting. If anybody has soldered with this, it looks terrible. It looks dull and gray. And people like us who have been around a while, we look at the connection and we go, we got to heat that up again. <laughs> once it's molten, it's solder. Once it's molten, it's silver, looks nice. And then when it dries, it's gray again. Very poor wetting, less ductility, and of course it costs more because it's 3% silver. Now, and it's not eutectic, right? It is not eutectic. <laughs> now guys, I am a little bit, uh, I always go overboard on things. I'm using 62% tin, 36% lead, 2% silver. So I use silver bearing solder. I work for a satellite company that I build all their coax cables for them. And uh, we launch about twice a year over here in uh, Fairfax City. Everything that I solder on board that aircraft going up in space, I use silver solder. Does anybody use this? Occasionally. Okay, so nice. Uh, yeah. And guess what? For tectronic scope, to all of us. There you go. This melts at 361. The silver solder melts at 358. And okay. the tectronic scopes used back in the old days used uh, ceramic terminal blocks with notches filled with silver. And regular solder would dissolve the silver out of that and so they pop off. There's nothing like a silver connection, guys. You got to see the underside of a PC board when you're done with it using silver solder. You can shave in every one of the connections. It's like a bunch of mirrors. All right, flux. I had a question before. We were talking about flux. Let's get this rosin resin thing out of the way here first. <laughs> you all know that it's sticky, but it smells good, doesn't it? Don't you all think it smells good? It's because it's a sap of the pine tree. Thank you, the ancient Egyptians, for that, and the Romans. So, the solid form resin, sorry, rosin is the solid form of resin, and it's in just about everything we use today. What, what's a good solvent for? Why do you mention that? That's next. Is it? Okay. Remember, resin does not remove stuff. It removes oxidation. That's all. It tells the solder come on down. Solder melts at 361. The rosin inside of the solder melts at 350. So it trickles out of the wire, makes its way onto the circuit and tells the solder, come on down. The solder flows on top. Beautiful stuff. It aids in wetting, reduces surface temperature, and there you go. I said 350, 347. Okay. Now, what I don't have is a slide what this gentleman just said. How do we clean the boards up when we're done? Now, this normally would be filled with isopropanol alcohol. I use 70%. What was in here 10 years ago, sorry, what was in here 15 years ago that worked like, oh, worked Freon, yeah. liquid Freon. And then of course, I guess it destroys the atmosphere in California or something. <laughs> so then we got rid of that and now we're using isopropanol that I buy from CVS. I give liquid Freon an A plus, I give this a C plus. It's fair. So we take these little acid brushes, and then we brush it on, and then we dab it with the cloth to take off the resin. That's what we use, okay? By the way, this is my rosin pen right here. 
and this is called RMA-186. That's what I use, RMA-186. Come in a little pen. Get it all over you. Just pour some alcohol on you and it'll come right off. RMA-186. What's RMA mean? Anybody know? Rosin, mildly activated. Activated with what? Isopropanol. This is the standard we use. Okay, guys, since I've only got 10 minutes, let's go over some of the tools I've got here. <coughs> I explained the irons. They're on your handout. For any questions, I buy, oh, there it is. I buy everything at Tecna Tools. That's what I buy. And you'll be pleased to know they have a $50 minimum. So, no problem there. <laughs> This is another very nice iron to have, butane, because this triples as a, it'll cut nylon and dacron, so you have a hot knife, and it also put on heat shrink tubing. So you have an iron, a heat shrink gun, and a rope cutter all in one. These are $65 on Amazon. This is the Cadillac or Ferrari of all of the gun, the uh, butane irons I use. This is the Weller Pyro Pen WFPA2. They're about $120. <coughs> but man, do they get hot. I think you guys saw me use this uh, before. <coughs> okay. okay. Here's something you should have. This will run you about 100 bucks. This is absolutely amazing. Especially when you're working with wire. You want to solder some wire, right guys? Look at this. You want to tin some wire. Okay, so we have this stand, and this is in the catalog. This is separate, this is separate, and this is separate. All of them are separate. But I have one of these on my desk at home at my, uh, my tech shop position in the basement. I think I've already demoed banana cutters before. You guys have these? These are absolutely similar. similar? Mm -hmm. A little bit larger. If you're going to be a coax guy, and I teach coax cable also, I teach coax and connectors, you got to have these. These are about 80 bucks. What I didn't show, anybody ever have one of these old isotip battery yep. powered? Five minutes? Woo okay. Well, then I don't want to, I just don't want you guys to leave without knowing the finest wire strippers on the face of the earth. And I don't work for Hoson. One of my partners found these on Akihabara in Japan. These are the best. Let me demo real quick. RG174. I want to put a connector on. Ready? One, that's off. Center conductor, getting ready for, that's ready. We're ready now. We're ready to put the connector on. No dinging at all. Look at this. Stripping wire. Look at this, guys. <coughs> They're razors. Effortless. How about number 12? About number 12, bus wire. You guys ever work with this? Yeah. Almost magic, huh? You need to be having Eric has talent. That's what? Eric has got talent. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Japanese are out strippers. <laughs> We couldn't even buy these in the United States till a few years ago. Now they're available on, on Amazon. They're about $35. And by the way, all Japanese products in the last few months are cheaper because the yen's 128 now. When I bought my Nissan, it was 98. Now it's 128. <laughs> Everything's going to be cheaper from Japan now, guys, this year. This is RG316. Anybody use this? RG316. Getting ready for that one? Here we go. Let's do that again. Pick the right one, Ron. There we go. Okay. Center conductor. 
ready to put the connector on. Is that the one with the clear nylon outer jacket? Real sharp, Frank. Mm -hmm. What's that? Is that the one with the clear nylon outer jacket? Uh, no, Teflon. <coughs> uh, guys, I'll take questions. I do have, this is a Ferrari Chevrolet. Okay, there we go. I'll take questions. We only have a few minutes. I've got a question. You, you, you said you soldered in Helsinki. Uh, there is a problem with, with tin. It's called a tin disease. And organ pipes that were made out of tin that were in old churches disintegrated. Wow. Did, 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 does that happen to the solder in places like Helsinki? And say like Didn't notice. Tin? Most of the stuff I do only lasts two years anyway. It's, it's up, shall we say, it's up for two years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've never noticed anything real long term. Okay. I still solder my antennas, contrary to popular belief that we had in one of the briefings I gave. Uh, you guys solder your coax to your antenna in the center? Yeah, me too. Okay.